Broke Zazzle's back had little to do with anything in her control. Her job was to trust, and she did. She was an ambassador of projectile motion, a believer in the curve that Galileo studied 200 years earlier. Now it was 1877, and Zazzle was an understudy of the great Farini, a showman famous for being the first to cross Niagara Falls on a tightrope. That was already 17 years ago, and at the tail end of his acrobatic career, Farini was searching for a new act to bring to audiences. He found English-born Rosa Maria Richter, Zazzle. Rosa had already been performing with her acrobatic family on the highway for years. Performing came naturally, and so it was only a matter of trusting, knowing that whatever goes up must also come down. And if given the right kind of initial velocity, that object creates a big, beautiful curve, just like the one that Galileo studied. And so at only age 14, Zazzle became the first human cannonball. The math is there, so we can see what happened. To start, let's assume that the great Farini knew that the launch angle of 45 degrees would give Zazzle the greatest range, and that the point she leaves the cannon is the same height as the net that caught her. We know her distance traveled because they measured it at 6.1 meters. Once Zazzle leaves the muzzle of the cannon, the only force acting on her is that of gravity. She'll accelerate at the rate of 9.8 meters per second squared straight towards Earth, just like every other object in free fall motion. Acceleration is how much our velocity changes per unit time, and velocity is a vector quantity. When Zazzle leaves the cannon, she has both a velocity in the x direction and the y direction. Because the only force is gravity, and gravity is in the y direction, she will only accelerate, or change her velocity, in the y direction. That means her x velocity stays the same the whole time. If we can find the launch velocity of the cannon, we can then use that to predict Zazzle's landing spot for any angle that the cannon is launched. Our ultimate goal is to find the initial velocity, which is indicated by the red arrow. Because we have a right triangle, we can use trigonometric identities to find the components for the initial velocity in the x and y direction, and put those into our table. Using what we know, we will develop a plan to find the initial velocity. We know that the limiting factor here is the time that Zazzle is in the air. If we find the time it takes for her to fall, then we can use that time to find her velocity in the x direction since it doesn't change at all. If we know her velocity in the x direction, we can then use that to find the total velocity, since we have our triangle that shows their relationship. Using our kinematics equation in the y direction, we can develop an expression for the time it takes Zazzle to fall in terms of known quantities. I've written the quantities we know in black. Our two unknowns are the initial velocity, which is written in red, and time in purple. So you can see we have two unknowns and one equation. So we need to look to the x direction using the same equation to see what we find out. As before, black indicates known quantities, red and purple are the two we're looking for. At this point we combine the equations, substituting in our expression for time into the x equation. Now that we have one equation and one unknown, all we need to do is simplify and solve for the initial velocity. Zazzle leaves the cannon at roughly the speed of a racehorse, and we know that for any angle she is shot, she'll be traveling approximately 8 meters per second in that direction. The angle she's shot at will determine how far she goes. If she's shot at a steep angle, most of her initial velocity will be in the y direction, so while she'll be in the air for a long time, she won't be going very fast in the x direction. If she's shot at a shallow angle, she won't be in the air as long, but she'll be covering a lot of ground. On the way to our solution for the initial velocity, we actually derived the equation for the range of the cannon. This equation holds true as long as we meet the assumption that the height of the cannon is the same as the height of the net. Because we now know the initial velocity of Zazzle's cannon, we can predict how far she will fly for any angle theta. For instance, if we change the angle to 30 degrees, she ends up only traveling 5.28 meters. 
It would be easy enough to simply miscalculate, or maybe measure the angle of the cannon realm. Maybe the rubber springs that propelled Zazzle's motion wore down over time. Whatever the reason, after years of successful launches, Zazzle missed the net. After breaking her back, Zazzle stopped performing. What she left was a legacy as the very first. Human cannonballs today can now reach a range of nearly 60 meters, about 10 times that of Zazzle. If we wanted to, we could calculate just exactly how fast they leave the barrel.